This is Lay and Play TV's new tech series, Get the Lowdown. Uh, we're going to be doing features on uh, how to's, uh, little tech details on the whys, the wherefores, how to uh, find out if you've got a dodgy solenoid, how to wire a switch box, how to rebuild a pump. We're getting asked questions all the time, so we found it easier to do a tech series on the YouTube channel, which we can share. If you've got a good suggestion that you think we should discuss in a video, we'll make sure we give you the credit for, for suggesting it. We'll put your name up on the board. Uh, if you think we should, could be doing something better, just let us know. If you like what we're doing, let us know. If you don't like what we're doing, if we're talking nonsense, let us know. Uh, but enjoy it, here's episode one. This is officially episode one. We're gonna strip down uh, this Blackmagic hydraulic pump. This is pretty much similar to any single pump you'll buy on the market from America or from Europe. Um, I'm not gonna knock any of the brands, but the standard pumps that you get for competition kits, I believe are all basically the same. It's only really the internal, the pump head that makes any sort of difference. First of all, to get this end plate off, which holds the tank to the, to the block, um, it's probably some crazy imperial size, something like a 9 16th or something like that. I'm sure Baines will tell you. Um, but 11 mils essentially the same. Uh, if you haven't got an 11 mil spanner, an adjustable's fine, or even a pair of pliers, just be careful not to scratch it up. Just whip them bad boys out of there. Okay, so once you've got those loose and off, you can slide the, oops, one more there, sorry. You can slide the end plate off. Now these tanks shouldn't be pressurized until, unless something's gone horribly wrong. So it might be worth just taking that tank plug out to let any pressure out. I've never seen one of these pressurized. The piston pumps do get pressurized, in which case you've got to be extremely careful. Um, now this tank should already be empty, but I've got a little drip tray. You don't want to get oil everywhere. It's horrible, it's not good for your skin. But, and these are really heavy when they're full of fluid. I'm pretty sure these have been pre-drained, but there's a little bit in there, look. It's always good to um, just check your oil as well when you drain it to check for any foreign bodies. Right, so sometimes getting these tanks off can be a bit of a pain uh, because they're tight, they've got a great big rubber O-ring. Um, as you can see, I mean, putting my fat ass on there isn't making any difference. Now, I don't like doing this, but there is a way of knocking them off. Sometimes you can actually knock them off just with the mallet and it'll it'll break the seal itself. Nope, don't do that too hard because you can dent your tank. But if you just get a little screwdriver in behind there and see if you can just pop it off, but this will scratch your, your block. I'm a bit of a rough ass bastard. If somebody's got tips on how to do this any better than me, then please put it in the comments. We don't pretend to know everything. <laughs> Lying Bane, must be a safety manager. Okay, <laughs> okay, so we've got the uh, the tank off the seal now. Minimal damage. There'll be a little bit of fluid in there, look. And if Baines can get a, a close up in there, you'll be able to see there's little iron filings, there's little bits of PTFE tape. It doesn't look too bad to be fair. Sometimes you get like some like really horrible black gungy stuff, which isn't a good sign. It's just old oil that hasn't been changed often enough. So this is your pump head. So you've got a motor, an electric motor, that's connected to your, to your solenoids. Again, we'll do another video on that. But when this motor spins, there's a spline drive. The motor spins that and it spins the pump head. That draws the fluid through there and then smashes it through the pressure port, which is what sends it to the rams. This has just got a set of gears inside. Um, I won't take this off and strip this now. Again, we can save that for another video. This is a Rockford pump head, fairly basic for uh, a competition pump. Uh, Marzocchi pump heads are the um, the preferred choice, you get different pump head numbers, which I think refers to the size of the gears. Uh, and the bigger the gear, the more flow rate you can get of hydraulic oil through your, your, your lines down to your rams. So now to take the, the motor off, this is just a 10 mil. Again, it'll probably be more likely to be some imperial size, but 10 mil seems to work fine. It's only two bolts. Um, and all they do is hold the motor to this block 
which holds everything together. That's that. As you can see, the motor's come off by itself. Just slide that out of there. And there's your little, there's your little uh, key that goes between the two. So sometimes a lot of people uh, come to me saying they're having issues with um, getting the lines to pressurize. So the pumps are making like a weird squealing noise and it doesn't seem to be moving the car up as fast as it used to. And on a lot of occasions, I find that these pump head bolts uh, haven't been tightened enough. And on other occasions, if the, if the system's over pressurized for what reason, the little O-ring that sits between that pump head and the block bursts and then the fluid, instead of going directly through this port and out to the rounds, it, it recirculates itself straight back into the tank. So it, it will slightly pressurize, but not as fast as it will as if you've got a decent O-ring in there. Uh, the motor, I think they're designed to be just a 12 volt motor, the same as what you get on hydraulic pumps on transit tipper wagons and stuff. Um, only these aren't as agricultural. These have been designed to take a little bit more kick. Uh, some of these you'll find are running up to 96 volts. Um, these have probably been in the Honda doing about 48. Um, let's strip this one down. And these can be a pain in the ass to get back together once you strip them. But you've got the end cap which has just got a little bushing in the end for the motor to spin in. So that's the end cap, there's a little brass bushing in there. So the motor, when you energize the motor, so when you've got your 12 volt, or the 24, 36 volt, you hit the switch, the power comes from the battery down the, uh, the solenoids to the motor, it will spin this, um, which is what turns that. Um, a lot of the issues with these comes down to the bush, the brushes getting worn down on there. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy a new brush sets. I'm pretty sure you probably could, but they're not that easy to to um, to strip out. I've got I think three motors there that have all died in the past because of that. Let's take this out of here. Show you a little bit more. Okay, so that's that out. Again, there's another, there's a bear in there which sits in that little cup. It all seems to be in good condition. Slide that out of there. So this is called the armature. Um, and that's that brass part there, or the copper part, sorry, sits inside these uh, brushes which get worn really easily. These look like they're in really good condition, to be fair. Um, sometimes you get a lot of, if a seal's gone, you can get hydraulic oil leaking into your into your motor this doesn't look too bad i've seen motors a lot worse than this in fact i've seen them where they've been dripping hydraulic oil out of the motor which isn't a good thing um, general maintenance of these if you strip one down and it looks like it's in good condition gets just get some contact cleaner and give it a good clean out um, you can take a little little needle file and clean up these brushes to get any junk off them but otherwise that looks like it's in good condition sometimes these armatures can get uh, really worn. Another thing that I've seen go wrong on these, um, they've got a little nylon, nylon washer, which um, just separates the case from the from the terminal. Um, if sometimes they can break down, or somebody could slip and snap it with a spanner, uh, and then you'll get arcing between your terminal and your casing, which isn't good. Right to reassemble your uh, motor, um, I find it easier to sit it on something. Like a, like a roll of tape that's got a hole in it. So you can sit that on top, because otherwise that will just rock around on there and it makes it a, a nightmare trying to get the, the brushes in place. So sit that on top of there and get your motor brushes at the top. Slide that over and then here comes the fun part, trying to get these four brushes. You really need four hands to do this. But if you get your fingers in just about in place, Boom, easy, first time. So after that guaranteed genuine one take attempt to get them brushes in there, <laughs> you gotta try and find, there's a little slot there. You gotta spin that round until that goes back in to where it wants to be. There's two slots, once they're lined up, should just be a case of popping that back into place. Doesn't wanna go. 
like that. Swing that back on there to hold it in place. Put these best bushes back on, I think it goes around that way. And again, that's got a little, a little spline or a little thing to put it in. And that's that back together. So putting these back through, you'll notice that there's a little bit of insulation on there. That's just again to protect them, same as this nylon bush in here, to protect them from, from any arcing out that could happen by those brushes. Now these are a bit fiddly to get through, but once they're through, they're in. Boom, and then those two bolts mount nicely onto your, onto your pump head. Always remember to put, to put your key back on. Otherwise it won't do anything, it'll just spin. So moving then onto the pump head. So these are half inch, but 30 mil are fine. Just about does it all right. Just pop them off. Seamless this, Baines. That's that. Some of these you'll find will have four bolts at the high pressure um, Marzocchi pump heads. Won't just use the two bolts, they'll have an extra two. So you'll take, they'll take these bolts out and then run another bolt straight through into the block. Right, so they're now loose. Pop them out of there. Again, check the condition, make sure they're not being threaded. It looks like these have been shortened at some point. They were probably too long. So these are pretty tight on there because they've got a little, little bush inside. Just pop it off with a rubber mallet. I wouldn't hit it with anything too vicious. You don't want to do any damage. Pop this pump head off and as you can see, the O-ring is tated. So that O-ring is supposed to sit in there and create a seal between your pump head where it draws the fluid in and your block. Now, when this tries to pressurize, what it'll be doing is it'll be blowing fluid past that seal and back into the block. So you won't be getting the same level of performance. It's always worth checking the condition of that O-ring, especially after a, a good few shows, you'll find that if you've been overlocking on the switches and you've been over pressurizing, something will give up. And ideally you want it to be something as simple as a little O-ring because you can pick them up for next to nothing and replace them relatively easy. Um, so that was good that we found that because the, these pumps would have ended up in something else. I won't strip this pump head down at the moment. Um, I would suggest that it's probably in as good as condition as it could be, considering bits of that o-ring would have gone through the tank and ended up back in, in the motor, in the pump head, sorry. But it seems to be moving fairly freely. Um, I mean, all that is a set of gears and all that does is suck the fluid from the tank through the block via a, uh, hopefully a, 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 a complete o-ring and through that pressure port and then out through all the, the, the dumps and valves and etc into the rams without that intact and in good condition you will lose pressure in your lines you'll find that the car isn't moving up and down as easily and it's a relatively straightforward easy fix so there's your main three elements of your pump assembly you've got your electric motor you've got a block and you've got the pump pad the block basically connects everything together connects these three parts as well as the as the tank as well as uh, the, the fittings that come out the top of the block then to your your, your dump valves and your, your check valves all the way through to your to your rams so if we take that element out because it other than that it doesn't really do anything it's just a block that connects things um, you can see you've got on the end of your motor a little i think it's called a keyway and it just sits inside the two there so that fits onto the the motor and then through the block and then the other side will fit on the on the gear so when your motor is spinning when it's being energized and spinning it's spinning this key this gear which in turn spins the gears inside the pump head which takes the fluid back through this little hole which if you remember had the the broken o-ring on it through that hole 
which is where the o-ring sits and up through that hole this hole on this side is just your return port so when you hit the switch down and it energizes the the dump nothing else happens it doesn't spin gears it doesn't make the motor work it just energizes a coil which opens up a valve which allows the fluid the pressurized fluid which is in your rams and in your hoses back through that return port which is just a straightforward hole which then fills your tank back up <laughs> 